what a total joy uh, to be here. Also, I feel I have to report that this is startlingly heavy, <laughs> Wonder wonderfully heavy. I'm Megan O'Rourke. I'm reading from The Invisible Kingdom, Reimagining Chronic Illness, and I would like to dedicate this reading to those who are sick and looking for answers. One of the hardest things about being ill with a poorly understood disease is that most people find what you're going through incomprehensible, if they even believe you are going through it. In your loneliness, your preoccupation with an enduring new reality, you want to be understood in a way that you can't be. Pain is always new to the sufferer, but loses its originality for those around him the 19th century French novelist Alphonse Daudet observes in his book, In the Land of Pain. Everyone will get used to it, except me. Worrying that your symptoms are psychosomatic is part of life for many people with poorly understood illness. Although the experience of illness is not just in the head, it is also not just in the body. The person enduring such an illness faces a difficult balancing act. On the one hand, she must advocate for herself, even when doctors are indifferent or ignorant, and not be deterred when she knows something is wrong. On the other, she also must be willing to ask whether an obsessive attention to symptoms is going to lead to better health. The patient has to hold in mind two contradictory modes, in other words, insistence on the reality of the disease and resistance to her own catastrophic fears. I found it hard that fall to strike that balance. I was increasingly worried. After all, a terrible anxiety attends chronic illness. Over time, it becomes difficult to untangle the suffering from symptoms like pain from the suffering inflicted by the concern over the possibility of more pain and worse outcomes in the future. This does not mean that illness is in the mind. Rather, the mind, that machine for making meaning, makes endless meanings of its new state, which may themselves influence the experience. It was in this recursive hall of mirrors, trying to adjust to my body's ailments, that I lived. There is a loneliness to illness, a child's desire to be pitied and seen. But it is precisely this recognition that is elusive. How can you explain and identify your condition if no one has any grasp of what it is you suffer from and the symptoms wax and wane? How do you describe a disease that's not always there? To be sick in this way is to have the unpleasant feeling that you are impersonating yourself. When you're sick, the act of living is more act than living. Healthy people have the luxury of forgetting that their existence depends on a cascade of precise cellular interactions, not you. And so in those months, I was lonely in a way I never had been before. I could taste the solitude of the human body like brine in my mouth, a taste that never left me.